as you're creating content, whether it's film, TV, music, whatever it is here, is there a mindset of how to make it palatable to a global audience or are you just making something for the Korean audience and hoping that it has broader appeal? Great question. So I think we always think about the local territory in which the content is designed for. So when we make Korean content, we want to make sure first and foremost that it's authentic and original native and popular in that market. Mm -hmm. Now it happens to be that many of the themes that Korean content explores happens to be universal. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, if you just sort of look at the the kind of the 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 output that we've had, even on Netflix, right. the past two years, I think we've had something like 17 top 10 titles globally on a non-English TV uh, category, right. which is phenomenal. 17 yeah. top 10 <laughs> shows out of Korea. And so we're, you know, after Hollywood, uh, and Lucas has written a lot about that, yeah. Korea is actually the second largest region in many of the weeks of like the largest non-US made category of origin uh, is Korea. So it's it's yeah. been phenomenal. And just uh, those universal themes, I mean, Lucas, I mean, you talk about, say, a movie like Parasite. I mean, that movie could have been in any language, I mean, anywhere. The theme resonates exactly. no matter what, what, exactly. where you're from. And you, you brought up Parasite. Were there one or two movies or TV shows that you felt like really communicated, not just to, to you and your company, but to the rest of the world, the appeal of Korean content? Man, you know, there's so many. And as a Korean American, I've, I grew, grew up with Korean movies and TV shows all my life. I remember, you know, as an immigrant uh, coming to the country at, when I was nine, uh, we used to have these Korean video, you know, kind of like a blockbuster for Korean shows. and. Our family would go on a weekend and come out with like, you know, 50 video cassette tapes. It's like the first version of binge watching, right? Um, so the past 30 years, there's so much rich history of content. And before I answer, I, I guess one aspect of why Korean content has sort of resonated is I think, you know, our vice chairman, Mickey Lee, would like to say, you know, the, the Korean uh, consumers, the audiences are so picky. They're, they're very... Um, their standards for what's good uh, is extremely high. So they, they let you know very quickly if your content is not good. And you run that through the past 30 years, there's a, a fierce competitive domestic market for good content. I think that's really honed in the Korean content skills to make something good. Uh, but to your point, <clears throat> you know, Parasite obviously was an amazing one that won the Oscars in, a few years ago. One of my personal favorites uh, is Crash Landing on You, which is a TV series about a... I mean, if I just summarize the plot, it seems a little outrageous, but there's this, you know, a, a wealthy heiress who, uh, you know, happens to land in North Korea uh, and meets a North Korean uh, officer in the morning. And there's a love thing. It, it sounds a little ridiculous, but if you actually watch it, it's, it's one of the most heartwarming and, and uh, fun experiences. You know, uh, a more recent one called The Glory, which actually did number five on the US list for Netflix, which is amazing. Uh, it's a story about a woman who was bullied when she was in high school and methodically went after the bullies in a, a highly um, cathartic way <laughs> from the viewers. So that's another example of some, some great things coming out of CJ. Now, both of those shows that you just referenced, Crash Landing on You and The Glory, I believe, you know, traveled the world because of Netflix, which has been a, a you know a, a huge player in in your success and in the spread of South Korean entertainment. Do you see its peers, the Disney's, Amazon's, Apple's of the world, coming into to South Korea and and spending anywhere close to their level? Yeah, great question. Um, so uh, we've really enjoyed our partnership with Netflix and I really do credit them for putting Korean content in partnership with us on the global map. Uh, so we really value them. Uh, more recently, we've had some great uh, partnerships emerging with Disney Plus and Paramount Global uh, and Amazon. And actually we're in discussions with many others as well. Um, I would say that <clears throat> Netflix is, you know, really ahead and recently they announced a two and a half billion dollar content commitment as part of President uh, of South Korea Yoon's visit uh, to the White House uh, in, in sort of signaling their further commitment to South Korea. But I think the interesting part about it is, you know, even even this town, folks who really know, they, they know, but many, many sort of casual observers 
when you say Korean content, they say, oh, well, that'd be great for, you know, acquiring Korean users. You know, Korean content is actually beyond acquiring Korean users in Korea. It's really almost like a content category in itself. So in our conversations with the top streamers, there are dis distinct strategies about how do we take Korean content and make it part of our, their global user acquisition story. Uh, just as an example, in Southeast Asia, recent uh, data out of um, uh, Media Partners Asia, 34% of premium VOD out of Southeast Asia, 34% is Korean, compared to US, which is 20%. So if you combine all the content coming out of Hollywood, compared to a small country like Korea, Korea's taking a third of all content uh, time spent in Southeast Asia, it's phenomenal. Well, let's talk about the bridge between what's going on in Korea, the production operations that CJ has there, yeah. you're their man effectively in the US, uh, in Hollywood here. Um, how much production are you doing here in the US? Yeah, so we um, actually were fortunate to acquire an amazing outfit last year called, uh, it was called Endeavor Content from Endeavor, renamed Fifth Season. Uh, we're just past the year in closing that acquisition. Uh, so Fifth Season, uh, their primary business is in premium TV scripted series. Uh, so they're probably most famous for Severance, if you watch that, that's a 14 Emmy nominated, a couple of SAG awards actually. Uh, an amazing group of folks with an amazing management team that uh, has some great partnership distributions with folks like Apple and Netflix and others. Uh, and so for, for our business globally and, and as the chief global officer, my remit is to grow CJ's non-Korean businesses. Okay. Uh, so in the US we have fifth season that's doing tremendous well. We'll probably almost double uh, our revenues this year there. We've got a, a post in Southeast Asia that's doing incredibly well. We've got a, a post in Japan. Uh, we've got some conversations emerging out of the Middle East. So there's just a lot of uh, activity around globally. I, I, I have to ask you, of course, as we sit here kind of overlooking uh, the Hollywood Hills here, uh, we're a few days into uh, a writer's strike. Uh, no idea how long it's going to last or how widespread uh, the ramifications are going to be. Have your productions been affected by that yet? You know, uh, nothing immediately impacted because we're just a few days into it. Um, you know, our position obviously is that, you know, writers should uh, be supported. Uh, they're such an important part of the industry. Uh, but we'd like it to, to be resolved as soon as possible uh, because I think there are a lot of, you know, secular headwinds and transformation of the media industry. Uh, and the last thing we need is things to sort of grind to a, a if halt. If that strike, though, is prolonged, similar to the last one that lasted 100 days or so here, would that have a material impact on your output? I think, you know, it, it, from a time horizon, you know, for sort of 2023, um, because a lot of our shows are wrapped and, and we're fairly well into this, and, you know, our business, you can't just, we're not in the scripted live business, right? But if you're in a, in a unscripted, I say, if you're in a scripted, premium VOD business, the cycles are long. So um, so I think the impact would really be felt probably in 24 and beyond, rather than immediately in 23, although at the margins we probably would be. So we would love to think this to be resolved uh, with all sides ASAP.